Good morning. This is your Crypto Day Morning. Today's date comes in that of Monday, 4th of March, 2019. My name is Derek Albets. Trades of the like with the Nietzsche's own risk and their own reward. But just maybe today we might have another one of these days where this thing can spark higher. Well, whether it will hold on the AID aid coin. Well, we'll see. I like how it's playing around this 1,000 Satoshi mark. First, we had nothing going on in here. This little break, it, some up and down movement that's holding this level course if it just sticks within this 1100 to 1000 range i'm not trading bitcoin it is down and a lot of other coins are and it's down two and a half percent you can call this an inverted cup and handle i rather state well it's an area of key support which was resistance key fibonacci numbers from the decline it had nothing of a large rally on its immediate move. It did come back to it for a second test. And then it rallied up to the 18 average of highs. Staying in the, this is test number three. Starting with this decline in here amongst this level. The more likely it tests a key level, more likely it is you take it out. There is one last holding higher low level remaining around that 3470 handle. If it breaks the support, fast moves down towards that area would be some, a place I'd expect it to go to. With the 18 average, we had a situation of getting above this level, one leg higher. It still technically can correct this move if it holds the support. And I'm not saying if that it's favored or even an underdog to do so. But again, breaking down amongst here, that's the most likely scenario. If you look at this on a shorter term time frame, this market started falling down at about uh, 9 p.m. last night, having a big fall at around 11 p.m., coming down to this 18 average, small rally, and now it's just congesting and really resisting this area at this point now. As we can see it amongst the five, how it comes down to this line at... Uh, Around midnight last night, bounces up and supports it short term, but making uh, descending moves, lower highs, breaks down below it. We can see it's been resisting that level, at least that's how it's showing on the shorter, shortest of time. That's five minutes, so I guess one minute would be shorter. And in such, when looking at my less even smaller sized uh, a playbook, or at least list of coins on my trading view, Sorting it by percentage up, I got eight coin. The TUSD against Bitcoin, well, the opposites. And we'll put that up to finish it on Bitcoin. PIVX is actually up, but just minorly. And then we got like the Dow, the dollar index, Doji, Canadian dollar, gold and silver ratio, silver, 15, 14. It's had an interesting fall recently over the last, end of last week. Uh, Dash isn't getting affected too much, uh, but a lot of the altcoins are going down. Let's go into uh, this one here. And it's starting off within the five. So therefore, let's uh, move this into the hour. It's having its gain within such. And you're going to see the opposite in here, as has been the case, of course, within Bitcoin. Therefore, this level of key support here, another test within it, how it's held so far. But since it's had its correctionary move, leaving the 18. And now you're starting to talk about testing, of course, at previous levels of resistance would be Bitcoin testing that of support. And if Bitcoin ends up taking some decent falls, I think all the altcoins are going to follow suit. If Bitcoin falls hard, then this one will be lucky if it only goes down to 2311. And if it goes really big, that is Bitcoin under the three number, like 2224, it'd be lucky, I think, if it even goes to 1769. Of course, for me as a trader, that means with stuff like this, I'll be able to buy back what I was able to sold. Because as I look at markets, when you have moves like this, you need sell orders in to sell this. If you don't have it, you weren't selling up here. Unless you were really fast and able to see it and work when the market had it. You didn't have much time at that point, only a few hours, minutes even. And then the buybacks obviously would have came in. This time you had more time to sell, but even at this top, you only had about three, four days to sell at above the uh, 3600 mark or 35. Yeah, 3,600. You only had a few days, but you still had time to do so. But when I look at this, if markets go up big, like 3x, 4x moves, and they pull back, and you own it, and 
you don't sell any, I, I really don't understand why. And finishing this off with an Litecoin. Actually, I'll do DGB as well. And support areas, I was talking about this last night. Two times X hit level here, 3X hit from this last point in the area of about 129. And within the last several, no, within today and yesterday, markets had a little small decline, but it's overall down a little over 2% against Bitcoin today, like a lot of the other coins are. And what I'm going to talk about later on is the reversal of trends and how this one's history has played out. I'm not going to do that today. But as it stands through, when it managed to uh, get above this level of resistance in, uh, on January the 5th, that was after it broke this established level. And since that point, it had a price correction, but it held the 18. That was the first leg higher. It was an okay leg higher, nothing too great. After that correction, it managed to make higher highs and higher lows and have a really good hot leg higher. This was a little worse than expected, maybe a little better either way. Two legs higher. So since that point, supporting in here, matching high, supporting in here, matching high. Okay, the up move has gone a little neutral. So therefore, it's got to break down below this level of support to establish a level of support to, a, to attempt to revert trend. Breaking it above this resistance is continuation of the uptrend as it was when it did so back on this break big green candle day. Thank you for tuning. Okay, Digibyte, DGB. And at 281 right now, falling from its second hit top at 300. And really, this looks to be maybe its first deeper correction within this 18, previous level where it came from about 266, 268-ish area, which would coincide with a pierce below the 18 average of lows. And amongst this, I'm not trying to predict what it's going to do, just when the market does what it does, adjust to the situation. For myself on my spreadsheet, I put in the price of LTC. I put in the price of DGB. I got the ratio. I know when this set goes around 30 to, down to 37 a quarter, up to 49 and a third, and up and down really means very little on this because when one crossing is up, the other is down. And I'll make a trade when it gets to this, but at 43 and three quarters and I'm waiting for like close to five or uh, 37 and a quarter, I'm a long ways away. As the play is to sell Litecoin for Digabyte back and forth, one after the other. So therefore, if this has a significant down move and Litecoin doesn't, or less, lot less significant of such, then I'd buy this for Litecoin. If, say, this goes up a lot more than Litecoin does in a particular time, this goes up, say, 2x, where Litecoin goes up 30%, well, I'll be selling this for Litecoin, those sort of deals, as it's just a matter of division. Best part is, is with the exchange fees of both DGB and Litecoin, of taking them off the exchange, be exchange being very minimal and fast at that matter, too, for when you need to sell, you can have all your coins, if you wish, on your hardware wallets. And then, oh, it's time to trade. Okay, well, let's, I'm going to have to take either Litecoin to sell for DGB or vice versa. So let's take that amount, those amount of coins I want to sell, put it on the exchange, and well, probably five, six, seven minutes later, you can sell them on the market and then do the transfer and you're done. Thank you for tuning in. Have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.